Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Terrence and I'm back at it with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a quick overview on how I created this inside of Blender, Fusion, DaVinci Resolve, and I used PF Track for the tracking. Let's have a look. All right, so that was a real quick video. We got our scene here inside of Blender, but we're gonna get back to that in just a moment because this actually starts with the tracking. All right, so first you wanna convert your scene to a JPEG, PNG, or TIFF sequence, whatever works for you. I had this converted to a JPEG sequence and I got it loaded inside of PF Track. Right click here, go to tracking, and I just did a simple auto track. Search mode, put that to optical flow. Deformation, check rotate, scale, and skew. Local motion, I set that to free camera, and I just hit auto track. Now, I already did my tracking, so here's what it looks like when everything is completed. So here's what I did. Okay, so if we open the auto track here, we can see that it tracks through and it got some points, and they look pretty damn good. So we go here, we right click, we go to solving and turn and add a camera solver node. In the settings here, I don't know what camera this was shot on or anything, so I just left it on unknown. And I just hit solve all and hoping for the best. And it seems to get a, a pretty neat um, camera track. I go here, I go to geometry and I added in a test object. This is what that looks like, this big old mushroom right here. If we scroll through, we can see the mushroom which stays in place, so that should work out pretty good. Right, we right click that, we add an export, and we exported this thing as a Autodesk um, FBX 2010. We had to get that converted though, so it can work inside of Blender. Now, once I get all my tracking data inside of Blender, here's what I did. So I got everything oriented, and then I kind of just went through the scene, and I could see that this point right here was on top of the building. Right, just right at the top right here. So I made, I got a cube and I kind of made it into this shape, something that's similar to the shape of the building. And another one here for this building. If you scrub through, you can see that the building, it is kind of long. So I made this to kind of represent how it looked in the real world. If we check our scene, we can see that the sun is coming in from this direction right here. So I added in a sun lamp that comes in from that direction. And then I went here and I added an HDRI. That HDRI, it, it, it doesn't match the scene perfectly, but it'll work in this case because the, the shadows, they aren't all over the place. If I turn on the render view, you can see that when the plane passes right here, it casts a shadow on the building and that looks mighty realistic. That'll help a lot with realism. To do that, you'll need to be using cycles. I think Eevee can do it as well, but gotta jump through a few hoops to get that working. In cycles, you just go here to the object properties I'm going to scroll down to visibility and hit shadow catcher and that's it you got something that can catch your shadows and since we got the sun shining in from over here it'll cast a shadow on the building and make that look quite realistic for the plane how i got to animate it was got a free model of a plane online i just parented everything to the body right here then i went to the constraints added a follow path chose the bezier curve that i just extruded out after messing with the forward and the up axis, I got everything to look the way I wanted it and the plane started following along the path. I just simply animated the propellers from the first frame to the last frame that that is on scene. Yeah, so that just rotates through the scene the entire time. The text here was just added in and it just stays there in the sky doing nothing but looking good. Now to get this looking a bit better, what I did was I went over here and I turned on the diffuse and glossy passes. I also turned on ambient occlusion in case I needed it, but I didn't actually use it in the end. So if you should render a frame and then jump over to compositing, we can see our frame right here, what it looks like in the end. And these are all the nodes that I used to get it to look the way that I want it to. So Blender has this information on their website that shows you how you can reconstruct the passes inside of a compositor or any compositing application but I just prefer doing the, the basic compositing here in Blender then I can render that out whatever application that I want. You can see here I, I, I added some curves to the, the, the glossiness that is coming in 
had the glossiness turned down right here. And here for the plane, I did some basic color corrections and then piped it all into a denoise note because I was rendering with really low samples. Added some blur so it doesn't look too sharp because the footage is kind of is kind of blurry and the plane is super sharp since it is it's CG. And then we add that, added that to the alpha over and we piped it all in to the composite node, which is the, the viewer node, so I can see what's, what I'm working on. When it's time to render out, I grab the composite node, but I only send through the actual image and not with the background on, because we're going to be doing the compositing inside of Fusion. All right, so here we are with the scene loaded, and this is what it, what it looks like. So we got our plane here. This is just uh, what was rendered out of Blender with the plane. Here we got the footage for the city. This was what we used inside of PS Track for their camera tracking. And that's all it is, just the, the, the drone footage. All right, and here we got the city again, but this time it's gonna be on top because what we're gonna be using this one for is for rotoscoping. We should turn on the Mocha Pro node here and we scrub through. You'll see that it's just like bits and pieces of the building that's showing. And that goes above the actual plane and that that's what allows us to see the plane fly behind the building so instead of rendering this out and having a flat image without much flexibility inside of DaVinci Resolve for the color grading and the, the extra editing adding sound effects and all that here's what I did I copied everything that's right here I just pasted it and started deleting some nodes so we have the city which is above everything just like before we have the, the mocha footage but this time what I did was I got it inverted. So instead of showing that part of the city, it doesn't show anything, right? And then I have that masking the actual plane footage. Pipe the output of the Mocha Pro into the mask of the plane. And now what that does is it shows the plane getting masked out, but it doesn't show the building at all. So now we can send this over to, to Fusion and we can start color grading different layers. We did a bit of color grading inside of Blender, and now we're gonna do the final thing inside of Fusion to get that, that look that we're after. So this is just a saver node, I just call it plain final. I throw it on here, save it out as a PNG sequence. Then we jump over to Resolve. Here's a project that I have in Resolve, and let me just kind of deconstruct what's going on. We got an adjustment clip. This is for the overall color grading. We got our clips for the plane here. We should show it alone. You can see this is, the, this is what we rendered outside of fusion it's just what we got done with the masking where the plane flies behind the building we got our plane all footage here then we got the plane on top of it and then the final grade on top of everything we added in some sound effects of course but i won't get too much into that right now it's quite simple we got the plane flying at first this one we got this one right here which is the plane flying away then we got the music in the background and some city ambience like trains and all that stuff. It's, it's real subtle. Maybe you guys won't even hear it. The first thing that I did when I dragged the plane footage in, if, I, if we go to color right here, you can see that it has some color applied to it. I did some basic corrections to get it to, to match the city a bit more because it still looked a bit CG when it just came in. So I just kind of kind of like flattened everything to make it look a bit more like the actual footage. And you can see like some greens down here in the in the buildings. I added a bit of green right here on the plane. Just kind of made everything dull. The red on the plane and the red on the blender here. I kind of made it match the red on that building over there. Go back over and make an adjustment clip. And this is where we have three nodes that manage the, the colors for the actual city. So this is three levels. We got one for the for the, the orange tones, and then we got some some blue in the shadows. And here we got some some basic corrections. Just handle the the luminance, and that is pretty much it. That covers everything that I did in this video. I know this wasn't really informative and doesn't go into detail on how I got, on how how I got some things working, I'm seeing the entire process. This took me a few a few hours, I think, to get it done. Now, if you guys want to see how I did everything to get it from from zero to where it is right now, I can do a tutorial on that. Whether it's using this exact same same project from start to finish or doing something new. You guys let me know in the comments. Anyway, that was it for today's video. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you made it all the way through, please hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.